How's the experience so far? <laughs> in Las Vegas, my man Luca, the child the studio. That you make it home with your shoes on while I'm touring these booties, scoring these movies. Yep. I know that I'm making when I'm chilling with Stewie. Yep. Ask my jackers what I did for Louis. Uh, sunglasses, campaign, and jewelry. Uh, uh, ask Albert uh, how he really want to use me. Uh, Come to Garcon, ain't using that loosely. Sure. Look at your forehead, sweating profusely. <laughs> the combination of plugins and uh, Alg, it's kind of like the hybrid setup that makes mm, my sound as far as the mixing. Green monitor really helps. You know, so big fan of the Focals SM9. They're pretty, pretty amazing. Now you you do the LT Life, you work out. Try to try, mm -hmm. try to lift the speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they try. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's pretty really serious, right? I'll do my, yeah. my squats <laughs> with the speaker. They're pretty serious. <laughs> so yeah, um, the the studio is great. We have a 27 uh, foot ceiling in the studio. It's pretty high. So we go here literally to the Sinatra restaurant. We went upstairs. So we had to do, we did a lot of work to cut this like in three, four layers. And there is a lot of work on the ceiling that you can see. Yes, yeah, cool. It's super cool. You don't feel being in the casino. If you're here now, you don't. No, you know, no, 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 not at all. It's yeah. Like, yeah, nice little like hub. It's like quiet. Uh, could, we, could we hear s some more music? Yes, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Uh, for and no. Oh, yeah, yeah oh, that's a good track. Yeah, that's a track. Yeah, that's a cool too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, that's in my crate. You mean, this, this track, I'm very pleased with what I did on the cake. It's very yeah. impressive. It's cool too because it's like such minimal instrumentation. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's like six stands on the mix. Yeah. Here we go, huh? Yeah. I mean, just go bonkers, make the young girls wild, and they go topless, make the dope boys smile, they don't need binoculars, make them nigga wanna pull out choppers, brr, 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 they got you. Who are some of the people who have uh, been in this room? Um, so far, as far uh, probably the best writing session that we had here so far, it was uh, Skrillex and Diplo together. Mm. Um, I think it was a cool session because what we did, literally, one laptop here, one laptop here, and the master in the middle. And <laughs> <laughs> no, and then what we did, we put both laptop on SSL, let's play together, and then we connect digitally one into the other one. So <clears throat> Skrillex was kind of like, was the master, was like uh, taking, build the song, and Dippo was just bouncing samples to him. And, and, and the, the whole session was cool because that night Dippo had a show, and Skrillex, he asked me, say, do you mind if I stayed a few extra hours to work on my own song? So we all left, and he was in the middle of the room singing by himself, singing the song, and they go there and write a song, and it was super cool. And he did literally in four hours a song, like done. So that was a good session. Then we had uh, Steve Angelo, did like um, two days. Afrojack did like a couple of days. Uh, Gary Emery mm -hmm. was with, with us here for a while, and a lot of people, like, I don't, so many. I, um, Cassettes, they're the same crew of Avicii, they did like a few sessions. Um, uh, Chris Lake did like a um, couple of days. So, a lot of guys. A lot of guys also, they come here for two hours, just uh, they work on the road, you know, let up, and now they have a proper speaker so they can just work before the show. Little John mm -hmm. um, and um, Jeremy Dupree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Heavy hitters. Music and electronic okay. music and okay. where what your your start was. The real, real one. The real okay. start. Damn. Okay. Yeah, because you know, back in the day, he he was like. Yeah. He was like the man. <laughs> <laughs> but not, he's not the man now. But. <laughs> so we want to go back really like that far. Yeah, like when you were like nineteen. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, I need to go back just a step before, so it then way it makes more sense. Yeah. I want to hear this. Like, I like. I actually personally haven't really heard the full okay. story before. So, <clears throat> um, when I was a kid, little kid, like 13 years old, 12, 13, I fell in love with the, you know, with the, not really the DJ culture back then, but just 
mesh with sound, do things with sound. So I have like two cassettes and I do my remixes. So bounce one cassette, add sounds, bounce again, and at the end I have my shh, that was the final master, right? All the noises. So from there, I started to find a way to DJ during the summer. So I was going on uh, this campus for kids and DJ and play music uh, for a couple of seasons. Then when I turned 16, I had my first professional gigs, still during the summer only. And I put a little bit of money on the side and I built my super small studio. Now, when um, I think like 88, like real beginning of house music, completely. I mean, I was, so I went to engineer school when I was 16 years old. So I have a little bit of knowledge, you know, about how to uh, produce, mostly how to mix. But then I fell completely fell in love with it, with the first house music and the first electronic music. So my background was more on the passion mode, the human league, the like UK new waves, and I was really, I was really into that. And then and one the day, really, that like, day changed my life. I was driving from my house to, to the studio on a, on a freeway, and I hear my track on the radio. And I thought it was the local station. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's my friend. No, it was a radio DJ, which is like the number one radio station in Italy. They play my track. I stop on the freeway, I listen, and say, oh my God. And then a few hours later, Flying Records call me, say, do you hear? They play your track. All right, let's wait. I remember it was a Saturday. The Monday say, <laughs> the Monday say, hey, we need like 5,000 5, more copies of your record. Oh, I can't print, I don't have enough money to print the 5,000 copies. No worries. The guy from Flying Records came with a bag, signed a contract, gave me the advance, and then they licensed the track. And then it became like a really big track in Italy. And then the follow-up single went like top 10 in Italy. And the next one, it went number one. Whoa. It really changed my life. So, and then I started to do gigs and, uh, and have more money to invest on technology. So I built my studio and I start and I, you know, I start my career that way. So I'm from producer. And now, like 20 years later, I went back to really my, what is my passion is, which is mixing and mastering. Like I start from there, you know. And you're also uh, the Hot Mom USA uh, engineer. I'm so proud. Yeah. So proud. Um, so, it, I, and I guess it would be the last thing, uh, like, yeah, just the, the experience of, yeah, like working on, on the label, because we're like a bit more, we're, we're like kind of, a lot of our stuff's kind of like weird. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so refreshing to me because, uh, and first of all, I'm part of this from day one. So, mm, be part true. of the journey. It's, I can really feel like, I felt, and I feel now the, the growth, and kind of like the this freedom. I feel like freedom on the label, and and it's refreshing to me that the fact that when we master like an EP, there is no rules. Like you know, one track it's like a house track, another one is like a trap, another one is like 170 BPM. But then with a you know, it's 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 cool to be in this way, and it's 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 fun. This has been working well. Huh? This one's been working well. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
We'll put this on the video. He <laughs> <laughs> makes the girls at the nipples like, he's like, listen, this sound, this sound is, you go like, ding. It's like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah. It was like, yeah. <laughs> like the whole thing, yeah. yeah. So it's literally fun, fun like to to mix, you know, and uh, also share experience. The other guy is like, can you bounce a version? They say, no, we actually use an SSL, so we literally record back. And John's like, yeah, man, it's an SSL, you need to record back. So I asked John, so when you mix the old stuff, he said, yeah, I want to mix the old Usher stuff, you know, with SSL. So for me, it's just get information about, you know. Oh, so he used to do, like, the Usher mixes. Oh, yeah, he did, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Man. Yeah, banger. He did that. Yeah. yeah that's a serious You still track. play that. It's a huge song. He yeah. did, he, he produced the track. He did the beats and everything. So um, he did, like, um, what's another one? They did a couple of big records back then. Yeah, like all, I mean, all the Little John and the East Side Boys. Yes. Stuff was like. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. yeah, yeah. What was to the window, to the wall? Yeah. To the sweatshirt yeah. thing, my balls. What was the term? <laughs> <laughs> the